Hey guys, welcome back to Sharks Academy and in today's video, I want to share with you the weekly market analysis and projection coming on to next week. So this is our website. If you haven't checked it out, please take a look at this. The link is in the description. And recently, we also have our mastermind program. So if you're interested, please check it out. Otherwise, let's dive straight into the dollar index as our first pair or analysis. So on the previous webinar, we actually expected a move down into this demand zone before a move higher because this is the last area of consolidation or accumulation right this is liquidity being generated you can see this trend line over here so at this point of time we expect prices to grab liquidity move into demand areas over here and of course over here right so now we are still expecting a bearish move so you can indeed expect sales of this supply right a temporarily bullish move so if you are scalper you are obviously going to look for buys onto um, dollar pairs Right, which means to say you want to buy, let me just write it down over here. Right, buy uh, USD star star star, sell star 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 USD. Okay, so this is the projection over here. And as prices taps into this supply, you expect sales. Right, so at this point of time, you're expecting sales onto USD and buy this. Okay, so this is what you're going to expect over here. And of course, vice versa again over here. So this is the projection for dollar index and how you can use it as a confluence to your dollar movement. So firstly, we have gold on our watch list. We have highs, lows, highs, lows, highs, right? Low, lower high, broke structure. Now we are bearish. Okay, and we're going to be bearish from here. So you can see all of the shifting structure, right? Again, track the movement on the H4, right? We have high, low, highs, a week out. This may be a break of structure to some. This may be a reaction towards this H4 demand created over here for those who are trading um, body breaks or weak breaks, right? We created a higher high. So this higher high was created based off this entire demand zone. Can you see this week? All right, whether it's a new candle whatsoever, this is the low that it has to break. So now currently prices are testing this entire demand area. Let me just use a different color. So what are we looking for actually? We realize that this is a demand zone that is valid and there are certainly traders who are looking to buy over here okay so if you are operating on a higher time frame you want to see this demand fail right and once this demand fails we expect liquidities to be met right around here and perhaps the lower ones at this level can you see this is a valid demand area so the truth is that if this demand fails we are definitely going downside and if you want to catch or position yourself at a higher area we are definitely going down to the lower time frame so let's just do that so now on the 15 minutes time frame, can you see that this is the highest it ever went to? Then what did it do over here? On the H1, this is a valid demand. Prices taps in, reacted, break structure. Based off the H1, you are already eligible for sales. And where are you going to sell from? This entire inside bar is definitely valid for sales. Play around the time frames. Look for a refined area for you to get the best entry. So if you play around the time frames, you are going down to the 5 a.m., 8 a.m., and you can't really find anything that is left unmitigated. Okay, maybe on the 1 m, if you are playing the 1 m, you realize that there's purely mitigations, right? So your only area is mostly on the 1 hour. So this is the 1 hour. This inside bar is valid for sales. And if you are operating on the 50% level, use the FIP tool or use this measuring tool. Tighten your entry range so now you realize that this is a tighter um, range or supply zone that you can get involved and simply place a sell here stop loss above the high and aim for lows this is the liquidity area they're looking for of course you can um, expect this trend line to be broken right so we're going to see a move up and the breakdown this is definitely valid otherwise use this as your three-step process right because this is the framework the break of structure highs lows s and d zones and your step two Step three, go down to the 15 minutes to look for a shift. So you're going to see a move up, you're going to see a breakdown, supply zone, get involved for downside move. So to add on, if you're confused about the lower time frame movements inside of here, then simply skip this entire ranging pattern over here, right? Wait for prices to tap in, pull back, right? Fail to make a higher high, breaks down. Then now you are positioning yourself to be a seller into this liquidity and this demand right understanding that you can be a seller at this level 
then simply do the three-step process again. Right? Step number one, break off structure on the H4. Step number two, S and D zone. Step number three, shift in structure. Whichever time frame that is um, comfortable for you, right? You can even go down to the five minutes, the 15 or the one hour to look for the shift that you are satisfied with. A pullback, get involved. Right? So now, if you do not know what's a three-step process, please watch our YouTube channel. And for those who are new to our channel, please subscribe and uh, place the alert and you can see our videos whenever we post and upload, right? Otherwise, we'll move on to the next. So next up, we have the Aussie dollar and you can see that this is the supply I'm looking to sell from, right? And also this supply over here. So both of these areas are valid for sales. And I think that we went through this during the previous weekly market analysis. So where am I looking to buy from then? I'm definitely looking to buy over here. You can see this demand is the area I'm looking to buy from. So can you buy over here? Of course you can. Yes. So if you look for a lower time frame confirmation, this demand is still valid, although it got wicked out. You can see clearly. So again, let's go down to the lower time frame. And I'm certain that prices are going to run this demand. So let's just remove because you want to see typically a move like this. A tap, pull back, break structure, demand zone, get involved. So I may be wrong, right? Prices can, of course, make its way higher into this uh, supply zone. Then give us the reaction that we want before the break of structure. If this happens, we can take buys here, right? Otherwise, we expect this to get ran because of this uh, bearish movement into where? Into this demand. So what do you want to see at this demand zone? You either want to see your H4 delivering in this manner, right? Pro trend is now bearish. You want to see a break of the H4, pull back, step process over here right which means to say you want to see prices coming back here give you the shift pull back look for buys this is the first scenario second scenario is that your h4 is going to move down from here right without giving you a swing high then the swing low so now with this you go down to the lower time frame immediately expect prices to tap into this level again break structure demand zone get involved does this mean that prices is going to move higher not necessarily Prices can move up, mitigate some sort of supply here, continue to deliver lower. Wait for 15M shift, pull back, get involved. I expect prices to move higher. Okay, And if this fails again, prices can indeed go deeper, mitigate, liquidate as well, right? Break structure, demand zone, get involved. So if you're always operating on this process where you are always looking for a break of structure on the 15M or on the one hour, depends on the kind of confirmation you're looking for, right? Then you're positioning yourself to be a successful trader because you are doing the same thing at a POI that you are already looking at, right? Because my bias is bullish. I'm looking to eventually buy into this level, okay, or this level as well. So this is a valid supply. If I'm looking for buys here, I'm going to target towards this area because this indeed broke structure, right? This is the change of character and now broke structure, right? This is a valid sell area. So if I'm going to be a buyer, I'm going to buy into this level. Right, and if this fails, then I can continue to look for buys. And how do I do that? This is a valid supply. I'm going to see prices react, try to push lower, fail to create a lower low, break structure, demand area, three step process over here, right? Because we have a H4 BOS, look for 15M shift, demand area, get involved. So this is the top process for the Aussie dollar. Next up, Euro pound. Um, this is nothing for me, right? You can see this is very ugly price action. And again, we are still on the weekly lows. We are still operating onto this demand zone. And my bias is definitely going to be bullish, right? Because we are trying to buy low. So I'm not going to do anything until prices decides to break this level or break this high. Okay. If prices break this high, we are almost going to move towards the higher areas, right? All of these areas will be used as liquidity, probably tapping into this supply. Otherwise, if prices break this area, okay? Look at the reaction points, how prices break structure. Okay, we tap into this demand. We get a pullback. This is the reaction. If we tap into this demand again, right, because now we are mitigating deeper, you're going to see a reaction. Then the breakdown. This calls for a possible sell because this is your flip zone. So this is the only way uh, as to how I'm going to trade the euro pound as for now. But if you're looking at the lower time frame, like the four hours, then there are, of course, areas for you to play around. Right, and for me, I'm going to position myself as a buyer anywhere inside of this area. So check the movements. Okay, we have a break of structure here. We have a break of structure here. So my high comes from this level. So now if prices were to make a move higher, 
pulls back, this is a potential buy to push prices higher, right? Of course, understanding that there are two roadblocks immediately. This is a possible supply and this is the one as well. So both of these supply has the potential to continue this bearish movement downside. And unless we see this fail, then we can look for buys. So Euro Yen is pretty straightforward. On the daily time frame, we have this supply that was left unmitigated. So of course, I'm expecting prices to make a move towards this supply before selling off. So if I want to position myself to be a seller, I'm going to sell high over here. Okay, expecting this trend line liquidity to get uh, liquidated over here. So now, what happens if prices starts to deliver lower and it never comes back? Look at where prices are tapping onto now. It's tapping onto a demand zone over here. So now, when prices makes its way lower, pull back, break down. What, what, what is this? Right? What is this movement over here? This is the reaction of this demand that failed to create a high high that broke down. Now you can be a seller and you're gonna sell at this flip zone, right? And this is where you use your three-step process again. Okay, you're gonna see a pullback, you're gonna see a break of structure on the lower time frame, pull back again, get involved. You can use Wyckoff, you can use SD flips again, you can use um, order flow for entries. Next up, Euro dollar. So we expected a bullish move and it did broke out of um, this area again. And can you see what happens when prices break structure? Valid supply. This supply could take us lower, right? Taps in, pulls back, break out of structure. This is your reaction point. This is your valid entry. So now if you are a risk, uh, if you're an aggressive trader, right off the bat, you can already place buy limits at this level, expecting prices to make a move higher because this is the flip zone for demand. Otherwise, look for lower time frame confirmations by means of a 15 minutes break again. Pull back get involved so only trade this if you understand what i'm talking about all right this is not financial advice please only take trades that you understand otherwise you realize that this is a valid demand as well okay because the, the move that broke structure came from this this and ultimately movements over here because high low break structure the lowest point is at this area okay so now can you see over here, we have a buy to sell model, or rather a sell to buy model, because we have a high, low, high, low, and high, right? So now prices break structure here, giving behind supply zones at this level for you to potentially sell from. With this sell, you position yourself to be a buyer at this area. So you can catch sells here, catch buys here, okay? And this is how you do it. Otherwise, you understand that we have another PY for sales. Where is it? This. This is a valid buy to sell. Why? Because again, demand zone, right? Prices, broke structure, taps in, reacts, break structure. So this is a valid supply on the lower time frame. If you don't believe me, let's go down to the lower time frame. And you can look for a buy to sell inside of here, right? So let's play around. We go to the 15M. And you realize, okay, now we have an inside bar over here that is valid. So the truth is that this is a valid sell area okay for you to take prices lower so we're going to mark this out again this is the demand zone use a different color and we're going down to the 15 minutes to look for this reaction over here can you see this is a valid supply so now if prices were to come back we we'll look for sales if i see the shift to go lower next up we have the pound yen and right off the bat you're already ready for sales because on the one hour time frame you do have this supply zone over here that is valid, right? So over here, I'm going to use the three-step process right, on the one-hour time frame because you realize that this has been mitigated, right? Um, this supply over here. So now prices taps in, reacts, break structure over here, react again, break structure now. So this is a valid supply for you to sell. And for me, I'm going to use the 15 minutes time frame to look for a shift. Pull back get involved so this is the trade idea for pound yen pretty straightforward and it's upcoming so they do take a look uh, on monday to see whether this trade idea is valid so next up we have the pound dollar and currently we are at a supply zone we are priced in nicely we are selling at a premium price correct this is a daily supply we are looking for a shift on the lower time frame so you can see this red poi over here this is basically the 30 minutes refined area where prices can eventually come back up and mitigate deeper right it's over here can you see this by the cell okay so this is valid and for me as a h4 trader 
I'm looking for a shift. And at this point of time, can you see this is a shift? Right, we have a low, we have a high, we have a break of structure, right? This is a change of character because it's the first time it shifts, right? When it pulls back to mitigate, this is the break. All right, we are positioning ourselves as a seller. Okay, and we are potentially going to sell into this demand zone because this is still valid. You can see this leg is still bullish, right? So now, if prices wants to hit deeper into this refined area, it's going to move from here, potentially. So if this price section over here on the low time frame shows you an accumulation stage, this is likely to push prices into this area, liquidating trend line before shifting lower. So this is one of the possibility. So if you caught sales here, you are potentially going to take most of your partials over here. Okay. So how do you price in and how do you get involved again? Let's say if prices wants to break lower and starts to deliver lower from here, right? Because this is a premium, uh, this is a POI, right? This is a refined area. It doesn't mean that prices are going to move into this, right? Prices can tap the open of the entire daily supply and move off from there. So now when prices taps into this demand, makes a move higher, fail to break higher highs and breaks down instead. This is a supply zone that is, of course, valid for sales. And this is how you position yourself and frame this market structure in a three-step process again. Because now you have a break, you have a supply, you're going to look for confirmations over here to take prices lower, right? So you realize that you can always use three-step process in any single time frame. Next up for the New Zealand dollar, you realize that we are at a demand zone. Okay, so over here, of course, big of structure, demand zone, and we are definitely looking for a shipping structure on the lower time frame. So on the 15M, what you want to see is a break, right? And where is the highest point of the 15M now? Over here, right? So with this bearish movement, we expect a deeper mitigation, leaving behind a high over here that can be used as a break of structure, demand zone, get involved. So if you're a passive trader, you're more conservative, you want to wait for another break of structure here then this is a real bullish move because most traders dive into the trade as soon as they see a change of character, right? Because this is the first sign that tells you prices want to move higher. But this doesn't mean that prices want to go higher from here, right? If prices can easily liquidate this, tap into some sort of supply inside of here and then go lower using this as a liquidity point. For a bullish move to be created, you want to see a pullback, mitigation, breakout of structure, then now this is a real bullish move. We are going to look for buys over here to potentially go higher, right? So now what happens when prices break down, reacts, and breaks down even further, tapping into deeper areas over here? This is still a bullish move because now this can be used as a liquidity area for prices to move higher, right? So over here, we have the dollar Canadian. We are currently sitting on an eight-hour uh, demand zone, right, over here. So now as a 4-hour trader, similarly, I'm going down to the 4 hours to look for a pro trend, right? Because at this point of time, prices are bearish. The moment prices broke this level and broke structure again, we are bullish. So where am I looking to buy from? This demand over here. So if I were to refine this further, I'm going down to the 1 hour. And you can take a look at this demand zone. This is where I'm going to buy for sure. Okay, I'm waiting for prices to come back down. Give me a 15M shift. Take the pullback or buys into liquidity highs. Okay, this is how I'm going to take dollar Canadian. So next up, we have the dollar yen and you realize that this is of course a break of structure. This is a demand zone that is very clean and um, we have a mitigation at this point of time. So now if I'm a 4 hours trader, I'm looking for a 4 hours break of structure. I'm waiting for this supply to fail, right? Because this supply broke structure has the potential to push prices lower. Whether or not it breaks this demand or it creates a lower low is another thing, right? So now I want to see a clean break of this supply zone. And if you are a lower time frame trader, let's say you are a one hour trader, you realize that prices already broke structure over here. And where are you looking to get involved? You're looking to get involved at this demand area. Can you see that this is a sell to buy? Sell to buy, right? Sell to buy. Go down to the lower time frame if you don't understand what I'm talking about. This is a demand, right? 15M, 8M. And you can clearly see that all of these are demand areas. This is a valid demand um, over here as well. This is a valid demand. And if you go down to the five minute time frame, you have demand areas over here as well. So 30 minutes is good, right? Over here, this is a valid demand. So now on the one hour time frame, you can see that this is being respected. We have this supply over here, right? 
you can expect a move down into this area, accumulate before moving higher. But as a H4 trader, you understand that this high is a reaction point. Prices can indeed wake up, then continue to deliver, deliver lower. And this is a possibility as well. So that's the difference between a high time frame trader and a low time frame, right? Because over here on the H1, you are already positioning yourself to be a buyer. On the H4, you are still waiting for more information about whether this supply is going to hold or not. Right? And of course, if you are going down to the 15M, then you, you can see that, yes, you have the same high or break of structure as the one hour because this is a minor high, right? So this minor high can be traded. How? Supply zone, correct? This is a supply. That broke structure here, can you see? So let me just zoom in for you. Supply zone, broke structure. Taps in, breaks down, correct? So when it comes back up, you can see all of these are reaction points and indeed give you, a, give you an entry over here. And this is where you can be a buyer using a demand zone or S&D flip. Of course, targeting this area, right? Because if you're a H1 trader, you want to see a clean break. At this point of time, you aren't sure whether prices are going to break this supply or not. And this can be a reaction point to push prices lower because this supply is valid, right? This is still bearish. If you want to be a buyer, you want to buy into the next supply zone or you want to buy into the next brick wall, right? So we are not sure whether this is going to be, this is going to hold, right? And that is why our take profit is definitely going to be inside this zone.